Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called The Exorcism at the House of Moncton Falls. This game is for two to four players, takes about a half an hour to about an hour to play. It's for age about 12 and up. In the game, you're gonna be playing as a team of paranormal investigators, and you'll be searching the residence of the house on Moncton Falls, this location that has been basically succumbed by evil demons and spirits. Your team is going to try and exercise these demons but beware you only have a certain amount of time to do so as you do that there's going to be progressively more and more monsters and uh, evil spirits roaming the house and trying to venture in and uh, remove you or knock you out and unfortunately if you get your entire team knocked out and have nobody on the lookout to come in and save you you're deep in trouble you're dead in the water but if you're able to gain enough victory points throughout the game and escape with all of your people still intact you're gonna win the game all right let's go ahead and take a look here are the full components for the exorcism of the House of Moncton Falls. As you can see, there's tons of stuff in this game, including a box. There is a timer as well as timed uh, pits that you'll be using for these dice over here. You've got a bunch of locked rooms here and unlocked rooms and characters galore. Now in a four player game, you're gonna have four characters, uh, two, uh, one for each player along with three watchers. And these are gonna be basically your life points which I'll explain later. You're gonna have all of these different cards here which you're going to be using by placing them into your hand when you go around the house and collect them. Uh, you're also gonna be setting this board out something like this along with the attic up here. You've got the ghosts out here and the black ones starting here. And then the foyer where you guys are going to be starting along with these uh, haunt cards here which can be turned over after the first round of play. These are over here going to be like basically the uh, objectives throughout the game you're going to be trying to complete these and they all have different uh, subcategories along with the title and what you have to do to complete them and what you get in reward. The attic here was going to show you all the different points for as far as cubes goes how, how you win the game and these are going to be all the cubes. Black ones are going to go on here and the white ones will go on here but for the most part that is what you're going to get including a nifty rule book to how to explain the game. Game. All right, let's go talk about a couple turns. So as you saw, the setup's pretty easy for the game. It's going to give you a grid depending on the number of players and amount of locked and unlocked rooms. You're going to place them in a deck, shuffle them up, and put them down. The locked sides are always going to be face down so that you can't see what room it is, and the unlocked will be flipped face up so that you can see what the room is. You're also going to put the attic in the front and the foyer in the back. It'll be a grid of a one, three, five, five, three. You're also going to set the curses aside along with the cards you're going to be taking from the decks that you'll be using, like these keys here and the new tools and pentagrams and more and more, along with the deck here of cards that is going to be used for basically uh, your quest throughout the mansion, where you're going to be gaining the rewards or victory points to place on this attic. Remember, 30 points and you're going to win the game. You're also going to set down all the dice on the little squares on the clock there with a six side facing upward. These are going to count as your turns. Every time a turn takes place, you're going to remove a dot. and you're going to also, every time you take away a die, move this haunt track up, and the more it goes up, the more likely you're going to be getting more and more haunts throughout the game. And you're going to be setting a lot of other stuff aside. Now, luckily, everybody is also going to be getting a turn order card, and it's going to specify how you take your turn. Now, after you've gone ahead and set up the game, which you're also going to have to do by flipping over cards from the top of the deck, and revealing six of them, and placing black cubes on all the bad stuff. They're basically like things that are going to ruin the game, uh, ruin the game for the good guys making it more difficult along with eventually clouding up those rooms with a fog of eerie twists and turns but after all that's set up you're going to go and take your turn now it says you're going to reduce the die pit by one so you're going to take the six and make it to a five or if it's a five make it to a four then you can go ahead and draw a haunt card however you don't do that in the first turn of play you gotta, everybody gets to take a turn and then after that you're going to start using these haunt cards haunt cards are going to have a simple die number which will illustrate all, all the room number which you'll be placing a black cube in and if it's a six, you're going to put it in both sixes. If it's a five, both fives. All the fives on the board, basically. And then you're also going to look at these little arrows here, and they're going to point towards the direction. The direction is going to indicate which direction the spirit needs to go into. And uh, basically, eventually, what's going to happen is going to be a down arrow for black. Another way a spirit can move is after you finish the quest, it's going to all the spirits move one closest to the cl closer to the closest player. So you have to be wary of that, because whenever a spirit hits you, you are in trouble. You're going to be actually knocked out. And if all your characters outside have been knocked out and you get knocked out one more time the game is going to end after that then you're going to go ahead and draw uh, perform it to three actions There's a few actions in the game you can move two spaces in an action you can use your current rooms action and that's either a locked or unlocked
locked room. However, you can only use a locked room's action if you uh, manage to unlock it first. But something like the living room will let you gain an active task card, which is pretty useful. Uh, you're going to also give and take any number of tool cards, basically trading with anybody on your same space. You can go ahead and complete a task card in your hand, and that is by taking a task card up from the uh, from the house. You're going to actually have a room there that you can use an action on. Speaking of which, you can perform a uh, action in the current room, which is basically how it works. Uh, you're also going to be able to remove darkness from rooms because after four darkness you're going to have this clouded mist hit the room and it's going to then destroy anybody on it and make it difficult to see inside the room until you use a cleanse action on that area as well as playing a card there are certain cards in the game that you can choose to play most of them are going to be these little plan cards here sometimes you're going to need to preach to it or you're going to need to have a working plan or some knowledge so on and so forth that you're going to gain throughout the game now as you can progress eventually if all the pips run out the game is going to end you're going to make it so difficult the spirits will trap you inside however if you're able to get all of the white cubes onto this little attic space you're going to then win the game if you manage to escape however if you've lost all your lives and you uh, can't escape because you basically lost more than all your watches that you have and a single extra life then you're in trouble but not only that if you happen to this is a more a major if but if all of these cards get used up then you will also lose the game as well that's the basic premise of it let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of gameplay turns and how it kind of functions all right, so we're back to the game. We've had every single player select a character. This is a four player game, so everybody's got one. And then you got three of these guys that are watching outside. If anybody gets knocked out, then you're gonna be able to bring these guys in. And all these guys are gonna actually start on their character location. But what we haven't talked about yet is your actual character cards, because each character card has a location that they're going to start on. So the bodyguard is going to start in the kitchen area. And then we've got the architect that's gonna start in the garage. All right there. And then we've got the doctor that will start in the bathroom. And then we have the medium, which is going to start in the kids room. And each and every one of these players will also have a special ability. Some of them will be only be able to use once around. Other ones will be able to use on certain specific times during the game. They also are going to have a special ability at the bottom. Mystical, law-abiding, vigilance, unlocked room. And if they complete tasks, these guys here... Uh, or a quest, whatever you want to call them, with that symbol. So here's a mystical one. So if the medium completes it, they're going to gain bonuses. So that's very important. Now, the main objective of the game is to not only unlock the rooms, but also, if you can, collect these guys here, these tasks. Uh, you spend these specific cards on them, which are going to be these, and then you'll gain a reward. These symbol here is going to represent the white dice here. But also, but even, even still, you're going to need to do another thing, too. So let's go ahead and pretend like we never played this card here. And we're going to simply start by taking the top six of these guys off the top here and then we're going to place down black cubes in each of the numbered rooms here so we've got a five five and let's ignore that one get a different one uh five five three two one and four okay so two and both in the five rooms five five two where's another two there's only one two there it is two uh five five two one, three, four. One, three, four. Okay, let's find them. One, and then we're going to have three, and finally, four. Now, these are basically the darkness in the room, and as the game progresses, you're going to have to put more and more darkness in. Now, for the first round of the game, you're not going to actually have to worry about this deck. You're going to simply be playing your turns, and that is to say that you're going to start with the first character. I'm just going to go ahead and use this thing here. This is not included in the game. This is just something I'm using for a first player marker and placing on the first player. Um, it might come with one. It might not. I'm not sure how that works, but it's just something for me to remember. Now, I've gone ahead and got my, my character here. Here's my medium. And it shows you what she looks like. She can go ahead and start the game. So she gets three actions. And I explained the actions earlier. It's basically moving, drawing cards from the rooms, uh, playing cards from your hand, or uh, trading, so on and so forth. So she also can get rid of these cubes here. Now, after the first round of play, these cards are going to start getting flipped over, which is going to potentially move this bad guy here. These guys here are not going to spawn until later in the game. If somehow one of these gets uh, revealed and it shows that the red one or the white one is going to spawn somewhere, that will happen as well. But she will go ahead and maybe move one space for an action, remove a cube, and then for a second action, remove a cube. Now, also remember to look at your turn summary. And on this one, it says to reduce the 
the chip, uh, the pip by one. So you're going to start by doing that. Then, of course, drawing one of these, but you're not going to do that for the first round. Finally, doing your actions, which is what she just did. And then after that, you're going to pass your turn to the next player. So then the doctor is going to get to go. And maybe the doctor wants to remove a cube here and then go here and remove a cube here. That's three actions there. And then once again, another pip is going to go off. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I keep doing this in the wrong order, but it's Pip goes off, one of these cards, then do your actions. And finally passing your turn to the next player, the Bodyguard. So now another Pip is going to go off. And the Bodyguard, which is this guy here, he's got a big lanky mustache, is going to, let's say he wants to do a room action. He's going to take one of these cards here, it says gain a weapon, and he's going to put it on himself. Now, weapons are just weapons, they're going to be used for these things here. So that's action number one. Uh, action number two and then maybe gain a plan card for action number three. Plan cards are these guys here and you can use them to do specific abilities. This one says choose a player and swap the locations of your player pawn. That's pretty useful there. You can have stuff like gaining an active task card, which is the main thing you're going to be needing to get throughout the game because it will then allow you to get these bonus points, which will be put in the attic here. And if you get 30 of them, you're going to win the game. Um, you're also going to be able to unlock rooms. I mean, there's tons of different abilities on here. They're all very important. First of all, you're going to be able to gain all five of these things through rooms here, as well as drawing these guys here, drawing this here, and then of course unlocking rooms of all very, very important. After he's gone taking his, all of his actions, another pip is going to be go ahead and drop down to two, and the next player is going to get to go, uh, and of course they have all abilities too, like for instance this one says each time the bodyguard purifies a room, he may remove all darkness from it. So if there was three darkness on this room here, he'd be able to remove all of it for one single action. That's a pretty powerful card. The Doctor can actually revive players or keep them alive for a round, but only once per round. And so it is very useful there as well. But the Architect is now up and she is the African American lady. She is going to go ahead and move one and two. That's one action for two movement. And then remove one of these cubes for an action. And finally, she's going to get to draw an active task card. Now these are all the requirements to complete them, so she has to remember that when a new one gets put up. Here you go. This will actually go into her hand, and then as an action she can play it from her hand provided she has the specific cards required to do so. After the first round of play is done, making sure that everybody's gotten their uh, their chance to go, so five, then four, and three, and two, so it should be a two now. Then, now, the next player is going to start, and the difference in the turn is simple. They're going to take one of these cards here and flip it over, and do what it says. Three means all threes are going to get one black cube, or darkness, place it on them. And there we go. Now, if at any point in time there's ever four on a location, you're going to take them off of the location. You're going to place one of these things on there, and any time that happens, if there's a player on that location, they are going to be knocked out and removed. Basically, uh, removed from the game until otherwise noted. Sometimes you can especially resurrect them from here, or a special character character ability, but when that happens, a new one's going to come on board. And at any point, all these guys are on board and somebody else gets knocked out, the game is going to end. But these things are basically in a block line of sight, and the only way to remove them is by purifying, a purifying action, which is basically to remove one of these guys here. It's a way to slow the game down. Uh, also, additionally, that after all of these have been used, the game will end and you will lose as well. Uh, not only that, though, but you're also going to take a look at the arrows, and if, for instance, this guy was down here, this little arrow here shows that he will move here. If this guy ever lands on one of your locations with a character on it, then, unfortunately, that guy will get instantly knocked out. You never want to be on a space with a ghost. It also shows the other ones as well. The turns are going to be taken again just like that in, in sequence uh, until eventually people are going to have the right things they need in order to play their cards. So for instance, if she had three skeleton pieces here and two weapons, she could go ahead and spend an action to remove this card along with the card she gained to gain four of these little tokens here. And uh, then she's going to put them on the attic, which is uh, one, that's four out of the 30 she needs, along with gaining four keys, which she'll be able to use for another uh, specific thing right here, like right, active tasks. So this one here needs a bunch of keys, so that'd be very useful for her. Um, and so on and so forth, right? So the objective is to complete it in time. As every single one of these die runs out, then this little marker here is going to move to the next portion of the board, and it'll show you it goes one, 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 two, 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 three, and three. After all these die have been removed, the game is over. And also to note, there's specific things that happen during uh, this point in the game, these little stars here. Whenever a die is removed from that location, you're actually going to put these white markers onto locked spaces 
and in which case, whenever you unlock them, you're going to then gain this specific thing along with the room being open and using it. You can always walk across these rooms, however, you can't enter them because they are locked. So you'll basically be able to walk like this, but until they actually get unlocked by whatever means necessary, sometimes it says spend four and unlock a locked room, then you can go ahead and do that, flip it over and see what it says. That's a stairwell. And they all have their own unique abilities. As you can see, there's a ton of additional locked rooms to go through. And the game will continue like that, scoring those 40 paints to win the game, or if you get knocked out, this big deck runs out, or the time runs out, you're going to end up losing. That's the basic idea for the exorcism at the house of Monken Falls. Let's go ahead and talk about it above. So Monken Falls is a cooperative game for two to four players. And uh, I have the rules for four players. When we played a two player game, I played with four as a four players, each player played with two. And then as a four player, we all played with one. Realistically, I don't think it matters how many players you have because as the pips go down, then the game is just going to continue like that. You're not gonna have any extra time or any uh, less time depending on the number of players you have. Each of the characters have their own unique abilities and they are all different in their own unique way and very, very powerful. However, the game gets so intense as it continues use then it gets very 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 difficult so it starts off as kind of an easy thing it's very easy to understand how to play the game but progressively more and more challenging I suppose you can always challenge yourself by increasing the amount of dye of, of uh, whites here you need or uh, by reducing the amount needed to cloud a room up but I really wouldn't suggest that it. it's just right where it needs to be originally I was kind of nervous as to whether or not this game was going to be too simple or too difficult but really it fits nicely it's right there uh, it's it was it was really interesting too because I was looking at the Kickstarter campaign. I got this a little bit after it came out. I was watching the video for it and everything was explained so well that when I pulled it all out, I really didn't actually have to go into too much detail with the rules, just a couple little things here and there, but otherwise it was pretty much directly uh, explained to me, which was very, very nice. The artwork is super cool. It has this noir style theme with the red. It reminds me of a Sin City a little bit. And the characters are fun. They all feel very different and they work together very well. This game would work as a very nice solo player game in my opinion as well. If you like solitaire games, I think it would work very well. Uh, yeah, it's two to four, but I think it would work solo as well. I don't think there'd be an issue there. Uh, there's a lot going on in the game too. You know, all these cards here are going to show different things. And sometimes you can get the darkness, which increase the darkness track by one. Other times you're just going to put in more darkness on rooms and moving different rooms. Place the red monster pawn on the attic and discard this card. So when you can get a monster that just spawns on you and you're in deep duty. And that's super, that's just really, really crazy. But the doctor's so OP sometimes because he's able to stop and save a character. And then you're like, wow, that's so great. But suddenly you draw new one of the haunt cards and then the ghost walks on another ally and that ally has been removed and now you're down wanting to bring another watcher in so you have to be careful with that there's a ton of replayability in this game although the main rooms of the house are always gonna be the same because you need to have those abilities to get all the specific cards you need all these rock locked rooms are very very different have very very unique aspects to them for instance the crypts has gained a holy relic and an occult tool and a key card so they're very good but you don't unlock these you know gain two tool cards of your choice as opposed to just the one uh, courtyard then <laughs> discard a tool card in your hand and gain one tool card of your choice and a key card so on and so forth so yes lots and lots of stuff and the game gets scary you're eventually gonna be unlocking three of these of these haunt cards as you go and the monster just moving everywhere so you have to complete it rather quickly it starts getting super challenging and I think that makes for great solitaire style gameplay you're either gonna like the art or you won't but for me I really really enjoy it I like the theme of it. I like the feel of it for some reason just that little added red just mm, hits me right in the spot that I enjoy it. I like those style, those noir style red th themes. I like the replayability. I like the cooperativeness. I like how it's got a challenge to it. And it also has a lot of uniqueness to it. All the different character abilities you're going to be going through. You're going to be watching out, you know, making all these plans that can get completely wrecked because you didn't expect the game to do this specific thing. Or you make the perfect plan and it works out flawlessly. Overall, excellent. Really, really fun. If you saw this campaign, if you watched the video and you thought it was something you'd probably enjoy, I think you would enjoy it. And I definitely suggest you check out the game, The Exorcism at the House of Monkton Falls, even though it's a really, really long title. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. As well as checking out The Exorcism of the House of Monkton Falls. It's got a really nice cooperative feel to it. And if you like these noir-style 
strategical cooperative games this is probably one you should check out it does remind me a little bit of ghost stories because it has that feel of moving around the board and things get starting to get more and more crazy it's not as difficult as that game that game's really difficult but it has that nice a bit of uh of difficulty to it and replayability which is also nice also go ahead and check out our website unfilteredgamer.com we have tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more and as well as our artist page well if you're an artist or know an artist go ahead and have them join our site and put them on the list and they can go ahead and get commission work for free it doesn't cost anything it's just a nice way of working together with the industry also check out our friends everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek as well as checking out our giveaway currently going on with aeg and tabletop takeovers we are giving away space base and that game is super good i'll have a review for that as well but i'm already spoiling it because i really liked it and that's why it's being given away all right guys thank you for watching and as always we appreciate it and i look forward to seeing you guys next time